Good evening. At this time, I will entertain a motion to return to our regular order of business. I so move. Mr. Karen? Second. Motion second. made second. Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Uh, could we rise for a moment of silence? Since our last meeting, we have lost three members of the Dighton family. Erin Ferry, 33, of Dighton, passed away the evening of May 7th. Erin is survived by her parents, Highway Superintendent Thomas Ferry, and Animal Control Officer Stacy Ferry. Erin was a graduate of Dighton Hobart Regional High, High School. She was an election worker in Dighton and served as Dighton's Gatcher representative. She was also active in the Lions Club as well as the Lincoln Village community. Also passing, Michael Rose passed away unexpectedly on Sunday, May 1st. The son of the late Clinton and Adele Rose, he was a lifelong resident of Dighton where he was involved in the family business, the Dighton Red and White on Main Street. Michael is survived by his wife, Nancy Rose. Alan Thurston, age 77, passed away on May 3rd, 2022. He worked as a manager at Napa Taunton Auto for over 50 years. He is the father-in-law of Dighton's administrative assistant, Karen Brady. At this time, I ask for a moment of silence in their memory. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next order is public input. And anyone who wishes to speak at this time, please state your name and your address. We also ask that if it is a matter in which you have a complaint about any employee or appointed official, that you address those concerns with Town Administrator Mullen rather than through public input. We also ask that department heads or um, commission, committee leadership, if they have business that they wish to discuss, that it be done uh, through the agenda process, asking to be placed on the agenda. At this time, anyone present have anything for the greater good? Anyone on Zoom wish to speak at this time in the public input session? Mr. Karen? Hello? Since there's no further comment, um, new business. Review, discuss, and act. Recommendation to your appointment to Highway Department, Labor Class 1. Mr. Mullen, do you have anything? Yes, we have uh, the Highway Superintendent and I, uh, we, have a, we have a recommendation uh, to, uh, we have a recommendation to hire, we have a recommendation to hire Jeff Pimentel from Dighton. Uh, Jeff is actually here with us. Uh, Jeff is actually here with us. We um, um, had two interview processes uh, um, to fill uh, to fill this position, um, and we're very very happy to be have uh, uh, to have the potential of Jeff joining us with uh, with your approval this evening, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. After reviewing applications on hand with the town administrator, Mr. Ferry would like to recommend Jeff Pimentel from Dighton as 
our operator class to fill our operator class one vacancy. Mr. Pacheco? Is it Pimentel or Pimentel? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So this is a nine. Uh, yeah, uh, a non-Portuguese person. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion that Jeffrey Pimentel be appointed as operator uh, class one, uh, as who has an operator one class license to the highway department. Mr. Karen? Hello? Mr. Karen. Motion has been made and second. Hello. Second. Uh, Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Hello? Aye. Uh, Chairman Hull is an aye. Uh, Mr. Pimentel, congratulations and thank you. Thank Welcome you. aboard. Uh, next item on the agenda, recommendation to appoint Daniel Higgins to the Open Space Committee. Uh, um, um, included in your packet, Mr. Chairman, we have a recommendation from the Chairman of the Open Space Committee, um, Kevin Smith. Uh, that the open space met, and uh, they are, are recommending Mr. Daniel Higgins uh, for appointment to the committee. At the open space committee meeting Monday evening, uh, we voted unanimously to accept the volunteer application from Dan Higgins. We would like to recommend the Board of Selectmen appoint him to this committee. At this time, I would entertain a motion to accept Daniel Higgins. I'll make a motion that we appoint Daniel Higgins to the Open Space Committee. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Aye. Chico? Aye. Uh, Mr. Karen? Aye. Uh, Chairman Hull is an aye. I want to welcome Mr. Higgins to the board and congratulations uh, are in, in order. Um, <coughs> also serves on the Dighton Industrial Development Commission as chairman, and he's been an excellent addition to this town. Thank you. Um, next item, to appoint Kent Pacheco as liaison, selectman Kent Pacheco as liaison to the Dighton Trails Committee. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I, I make that motion to appoint um, Kent to the Dighton Trails Committee. Uh, Mr. Hull will step down as chairman to second that motion. All those in favor? Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Uh, as long as congratulations. It's not Thank you. <laughs> uh, recommendation to appoint Tom Ferry to the Joint Transportation Planning Group. Mr. Mullen, could you explain a little bit about this group? This is uh, yes. one that seldom comes before us and so yes, uh, the, uh, the joint the joint transportation planning group or the JTPG um, is uh, the regional planning group um, uh, like, uh, like for transportation infrastructure priorities uh, that is that is housed under SERPED. Um, so uh, um, so SERPED each year uh, uh, they seek representatives uh, from each of their 27 member communities. Uh, like, uh, like in the position of, in the permission, yeah, uh, like for the position of a permanent um, and like an, and an alternate member, um, and uh, what the JTPG does, uh, like, is it helps, is it helps to create, uh, like a, uh, you know, like a regional transportation funding plan. Uh, um, so specifically, any improvements uh, to uh, to Route 44 um, or to or to 138 that we uh, that we have an interest in here, uh, that we have an interest in here in town, uh, that also have an impact regionally. Uh, those are the different types of projects uh, that uh, 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 that typically go before uh, the JTPG. So, like this is an annual appointment. Um, uh, for the last few years, the highway superintendent has been the town's appointee to the JTPG, and since last year, shortly after I was hired as a town administrator, I became the alternate member. Uh, at this time, I'll accept a motion to appoint Tom Ferry to the Joint Transportation Planning Group. So moved. Mr. Karen? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Mullen? I mean, I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. 
Uh, review, discuss, and act on the recommendation to appoint Mike Mullen to the Joint Transportation Planning Group. Mr. Pacheco. I'll make a motion that we appoint um, Town Administrator Mike Mullen Jr. to the Joint Transportation Planning Group as an alternate member. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Review, discuss, and act on the recommendation to appoint Elise Vincent to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I have a letter to Mike Mullen dated April 28th. Uh, please be, ad be advised that on April 27, 2022, the Zoning Board of Appeals voted unanimously to recommend the appointment of Elise Vincent of 2709 Wellington Street, North Dighton, as a member of the Dighton Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, at this time, I will entertain a motion to accept Ms. Vincent as a member of the ZBA. I'll make a motion that we appoint Elise Vincent to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Motion's made. In, second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, Mr. Pacheco. Aye. Mr. Karen. Aye. Um, Chairman Hull is an aye. Congratulations, Ms. Vincent, and welcome aboard. Review, discuss, and act on the recommendation to appoint Annabella Powell as a GATRA Advisory Board member. Yes, so, um, um, so the recommendation before you this evening, Mr. Chairman, is to appoint Bella um, as Dighton's uh, 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 is Dighton's representative to the GATRA Advisory Board. Uh, the position um, up until January um, had been filled by the prior executive director of um, Arm of the Council on Aging. Um, and looking at the membership of the GATRA Advisory Board, uh, like it is, uh, the representatives are typically the, uh, the Council on Aging directors or the, uh, like, or, or, like, or, or, like, or the human services like coordinators uh, like from the uh, from the towns uh, from the towns um, and the cities that make up Gatra's advisory board, um, so I'm confident Bella uh, will represent the town and Dighton's interests very well um, on that advisory board. So I'm happy to recommend her to the board for approval. Thank you, and Ms. Powell is with us this evening. Uh, do you feel comfortable in this position? At this, thank you. At this time, I will accept a motion to appoint Annabella Powell to the Gadra Advisory Board. I'll make a motion that we appoint Annabella, also known as Bella Powell, as a Gadra Advisory Board member. Do I have a second? To <coughs> motion made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Ms. Powell, congratulations. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Review, discuss, and act Bristol County Agricultural High School one day liquor license request. Uh, Mr. Mullen, do you have a recommendation on this motion? Uh, yes, so this is uh, just a one day liquor license request that came forward from Bristol County Agricultural High School. Uh, uh, the high school itself has an advisory board that, uh, uh, that is separate from the county advisory board, and they're having their annual meeting um, on May 25th from 5 to 9. Uh, all the paperwork is in order, uh, the checklist is in order, um, and the liability insurance is in order as well. So I do recommend approval. I, I would like to add that um, this is an annual event, and approval has been something that has happened annually. Uh, at this time, I'll accept a motion uh, for the one-day liquor license request from Bristol County Agricultural School. I'll make a motion that we approve a one-day liquor license uh, for Bristol County Agricultural High School for May 25th, 2022. Uh, motion made and second. All those in favor? Campy Chico is an aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Review, discuss, and act on a request to waive permit fees for Northern Drill Services 
130 East Main Street, Northborough, Mass. Uh, Mr. Mullen, do you have a recommendation on? Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, yes, like I do recommend the waiving of the permit fees. Um, um, Northern Grill Services is actually a subcontractor uh, of the Beta Group, uh, who's our consultant on the on the Pleasant Street Bridge project. Um, so the uh, so the um, so the soil uh, the soil the the soil borings that are actually being performed are like a are like are actually part of are like of our Pleasant Street Bridge engineering design work. Uh, so this actually relates um, to a town project. Uh, like in the future, I would recommend that uh, that uh, that we have an overarching conversation about waiving all fees relative uh, relative to a town associated project. Um, but uh, uh, but in the meantime, in the short oh you know in the short term, I do I do recommend that it is in order uh, for the fees for Northern Drill Services to be waived. Thank you and. Sorry if I put Mr. Aguiar on the spot, but with Ms. in lieu of Mr. Ferry's yes. bereavement, um, I would ask, since you are in charge of projects, sure. your recommendation. Yeah, this permit fee is actually a permit fee in my department, so it is appropriate. So with that said, I concur with Administrator Mullen. I, I'm in agreement that the fee be waived for this project. Thank you very much. I will at this time accept a motion to waive the permit fee for Northern Drill Services, 130 East Main Street, Northborough, Mass. So move. Mr. Karen? Second. Motion made and second. Uh, Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. I, I would ask, you, you'll notice a little bit of a delay in Mr. Karen's response. Just so everyone knows, Mr. Karen is in Italy. So it takes a while for the transmission to get there and back. Uh, review, discuss, and act. Award of demolition bid. Hilltown Demolition, 294 West Shaft Road, North Adams, Mass. Uh, Mr. So, uh, so yes, Mr. Chairman, obviously we're joined by the building commissioner as well. Um, but we did, um, so these, uh, so these are for two properties, one um, on Main Street, the other one on Tremont Street, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that have been deemed unsafe uh, by, uh, by, the build, by the building commissioner. Uh, we put the, uh, the demolition for the properties out to bid. Uh, we, ac we actually received very, very competitive bids, um, and actually, according to the building commissioner, the most uh, the most bids we received for a project like this in quite some time, uh, uh, which is good. It helps, uh, you know, it helps real, it helps really keep our costs down. And uh, we have a very competitive, uh, we had a very competitive bid uh, for both projects in the amount of thirty nine of thirty thousand nine hundred dollars uh, for Hilltown Demolition um, of North Adams. Um, so they're going to be driving a ways here to Dighton, but. Um, uh, we checked their references as well. Uh, their, ref uh, their references uh, uh, were really good. They recently did a project in Bridgewater that um, uh, uh, I was very favorably reported on. And uh, like, and uh, like, and we have, and we have all the required contractual documentation um, as of now. So we're recommending it. We're recommending approval. Mr. Aguiar, is there anything you would wish to add in regards to that project? I do have a question sure. regarding these demolitions. Will they be completed before the end of this year, calendar year? Yes, they will be. I believe we kept the contract on a 45-day schedule, so they will be taken down uh, fairly quickly. Oh, thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. The contract is from May 11th today to June 30th, right. 2022. Yep. Thank, thank you. I will at this time entertain a motion to award demolition bid to Hilltown Demolition 294 West Shaft Road, North Adams, Mass, for the sum of $30,900. That would just add to be completed by June 30th, 2022. So move. To be completed by June 30th, 2022. Two. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Ken Pacheco. Mr. Karen. Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. 
Uh, review, discuss, and act 61A, I'm sorry, 61-A, right of first refusal, 624 Middle Street. Uh, 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 yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this right of first refusal um, is coming back to us uh, uh, relative to the right of first refusal uh, 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 for the sole um, for the solar project at the Racine property. Um, in, I mean, as you know, in the packet, uh, we do have all the recommendations um, from the assessors, from the planning board, and uh, like in the CONCLAM, uh, that, do, that they do recommend the Board of Selectmen waive the right of first refusal. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Goulart, I don't, forgive me for putting you on the spot, but as a member of the assessors, did you have any concerns or in regarding this project before we vote? Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, no, because uh, this project started quite a while ago, went through the whole process. It has pilot agreement, as does the Cabral property. And somewhere along the way it was discovered, the first step, take it out of Chapter 61A, was never done. So I am glad that we can now move ahead. And uh, the Stormwater Committee did give them an extension on the uh, time to start working on it. So, uh, so both the Stormwater Committee and the Board of Assessors are very happy. Thank you very much. Thank you. With that being said, I will entertain a motion uh, to... I'll make, a, if, I'll make a motion to waive the first right of refusal for the property at 624 Middle Street, map 8, lot 31. Do I have a second, Mr. Karen? Second. Motion made and second. Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Uh, Serpent Agreement for Economic Development Plan. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, so. Uh, so, so like as the board and the public may know, um, uh, we received a grant uh, from the state, a state grant in the amount of twenty-five thousand uh, dollars, the end of the last calendar year, uh, to help f fund an economic development plan um, uh, with the Southeastern Regional Planning and Economic Development District, um, and uh, uh, the state grant of twenty-five thousand dollars has been matched. Uh, with an approximately $45,000 grant uh, from, uh, from SERPED's District Local Technical Assistance Program, the DLTA program. And uh, um, not, only, uh, not, only, uh, like, not only has a SERPED agreed to help fund uh, the economic development plan, they've also agreed to be our consultant um, for the project. Uh, which, uh, as you know, we have a very good relationship and, uh, you know, like a prior working relationship, an ongoing uh, working relationship with SERPED. Um, so the contract before the boards, the contract before the board just lays out uh, the expectations uh, for the economic development plan, uh, the timelines, which will, uh, which will include community events and community forums. Uh, uh, so we do try to involve all of Dighton in the plan. Uh, uh, I can get uh, uh, and get uh, uh, I can get out and get everyone's feedback. Uh, you know, I have everyone's input. Uh, so the economic development plan uh, that uh, uh, that we we work in the uh, in that the development and industrial commission will work to create with SERPED over the next year and a half will actually be in f uh, will be informed by the wants and the desires uh, 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 in the priorities of all of Dighton. Uh, uh, so, th uh, uh, so this whole plan, uh, like in this whole initiative, is really, uh, you know, like is really aimed at being a community-led initiative. Uh, so the priorities that are reflected in the plan, are, you know, like a, are like a really community-driven. So, um, so to that end, I do, I do recommend uh, the proposed contract uh, between the town of Dighton and Serpad. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the agreement with Serpent for Economic Development Plan. Mr. Karen, do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. Uh, Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Howe, also an aye. 
Motion passes. On the next item, because Mr. Karen is on Zoom, I would ask Mr. Pacheco, I need to excuse myself from this discussion and the vote in regards to this special municipal employee of financial interest um, agreement with Nicole Mello. So the next item, agenda item is disclosure by special municipal employee of financial interest and in municipal position, Nicole Mello. She's provided us with the information that is necessary, that is necessary to be considered a uh, municipal employee and to make sure that there's no conflict, which doesn't appear to me to be any conflict. Um, I, do we have to make a motion to approve? Yes, yes. I, 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 the selectman, like it is recommended and required by the uh, State Ethics Commission that the disclosure be approved, and um, and um, at the at the um, at the board at the board's uh, last meeting, she um, in the public health notes was the public health notes was designated as designated at designated as a designated as a special municipal employee. Uh, we have uh, we have. We have since had a long discussion with the ethics. Uh, we have since had a long discussion with ethics. They, oh, yeah, they have agreed everything is in line and there's no issues as long as this is approved. So I'll make a motion that we approve the, the disclosure by special municipal employee of, of financial interest and municipal position uh, for Nicole Mello. There a second. Is there any? Is there any discussion? If not, I'm going to. This is a great asset. That, uh, I'm, I'm glad we're doing it. Thank you. I'll call for a vote, uh, Mr. Karen. Aye. And Pacheco is an aye, and uh, I assume that Sebastian Hall is going to abstain. Abstain, that is correct. And so it passes. Thank you. Uh, the next item review, discuss, and act. Memorandum of agreement of the clerical union. Uh, the Mr. Mullen. Uh, yes. Uh, before you this evening is a um, is an MOU uh, that the board approved in executive session. Uh, 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 there was a grievance on a matter, um, which which uh, which uh, which came to my office, which came to my office at step two um, a few weeks ago, and uh, working with the union and the department. Uh, Working with the union and the department, we did come to a resolution. Uh, 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 that is now before you for ratification. Mr. Mullen, I want to thank you for <coughs> great mediation skills that you exhibited in making this uh, agreement come together. Um, thank you. One of the jobs as a town administrator is mediating conflicts. And I know it's not an easy job, but you do it well. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Uh, I will entertain a motion to accept the memorandum of agreement for the clerical union. I so move. Mr. Karen? Second. Motion made. Second. Motion made in second. Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Review, discuss, and act on the memorandum of agreement with the highway union. I'm going to make a motion that we table this. Uh, item. Do I have a second to table this? Second. Uh, all those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Um, Memorandum of Agreement, Clerical Union and Dispatches Union. Uh, yes, this uh, this is another M this is another MOU this is another MOU, Mr. Chairman, that came before the board in executive session and and, um, and it was approved. Uh, they were approved. Uh, like in these um in these M O uh, like these MOU is similar uh, 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 similar uh, similar to various. Uh, so similar to various uh, contracts that have now been enshrined uh, with Juneteenth as a holiday, 
uh, like these MOUs, uh, these MOUs would as these MOUs would establish uh, would establish Juneteenth as a holiday, uh, like in the clerical union and and in and in the Dighton Dispatches Union. And I recommend ratification of them as well. Also, it should be noted that June nineteenth is a federal holiday as well. Uh, any further discussion? I believe it's a state holiday too. Yes, it is. Uh, we, at this time, I'll entertain a motion. I'd like a motion that we approve and ratify the memorandum of agreement as explained to us with the clerical union and dispatches union. Mr. Karen, a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Our Chairman Hull is an aye. Uh, review, discuss, and act. Annual town meeting, warrant, update, and recommendations. Um, uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so we wanted to provide, uh, we wanted to provide a draft of the warrant uh, uh, that, uh, that at this point, the end of the last week, uh, that at this point, the end of last week, was sent to council, um, and uh, uh, like, and we will, and we and we will have their feedback and comments by no later, th uh, by no later than Monday. Um, uh, uh, you, uh, you will see in Article Four that the budget recommendations there, um, there are place, there are placeholders for them, and uh, that we, uh, that we are waiting, uh, that we are waiting. Uh, the recommendations of the FinCom, and those will be finalized. Those will be finalized next Thursday evening. So that is the evening of the 19th, um, and that will bring everything in line f um, um, for the war uh, uh, for the warrant based on the recommendations of the board and the FinCom. Um, that uh, that will be in line for the warrant to uh, uh, to be sent to the print house um, by May 23rd, and then be able to be sent out. Um, to all uh, uh, to Dighton residents thereafter, uh, but uh, but at this point uh, we uh, we have a we have a proposed warrant shorter recommendations that as of right now um, includes um, includes a total a total of uh, 41 articles. Um, uh, like we have articles, I believe one uh, one through uh, one through 13, I believe. Uh, um, uh, the typical house, uh, the typical house, uh, the typical house, uh, the typical house keeping articles uh, 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 that we have, and we ask to be approved, uh, 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 so we can carry out the business of the town, uh, uh, like in fiscal year 2023. Uh, we uh, we uh, we have uh, four articles relative um, um, relative to CPC. Um, we have funding article. Uh, we have uh, we have funding articles for capital projects, uh, like which we're awaiting uh, the recommendation of the FinCom and the board on. And uh, then uh, the end, uh, the last 10 or so articles, uh, do, uh, do, uh, those, are uh, those are zoning bylaw and general bylaw articles um, uh, that, are being, uh, that are being presented to the board. Uh, uh, we, have a, uh, we have, as you know, Mr. Chairman, we've talked, uh, we've talked to, uh, we've talked about having, uh, we've talked about having a town meeting information session um, uh, to be scheduled on Wednesday, June first. Uh, so we have the ability, uh, uh, so we have the ability to review with the town residents uh, and anyone, like and anyone who has any questions about any of the articles, um, to uh, to have the opportunity to review those prior to town meeting um, on Wednesday, June first. At this point. What time would that be? Um, uh, presumably, that will be presumably that will be at six o'clock. Six. Yes. Like if that works for everybody else. Now, in regards to the vote for this evening, yep. it is just to forward it to the attorney for his review. So, 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 so that has already so that has already been done. The board at uh, the board at so the board at the board at the last meeting voted to place all the then. All the then proposed articles on the warrant. Um, so, so, so we do. Based on that vote, we did send the draft of this warrant to town council uh, at the end of last week. Uh, but we have, uh, we have, we haven't actually provided the public yet with a draft uh, uh, like of where we are and what the articles are at this point. 
Now, this will be posted where for the public's perusal? Alec, 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 once, uh, once it's actually approved on the, um, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by next Thursday evening, I can sent out on the 23rd, it will be posted, I'm sorry, um, oh, uh, posted as directed, um, and I believe and Nancy could probably um, um, explain more than I could, but I believe at Town Hall, I believe at, um, uh, um, at the North Dighton Fire Department, uh, we post it there. The post office, The main street fire station. You're talking about the main warrant? Yes. 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 And it also will be on the website? Oh, yes, absolutely on the website, yes. So at this point, you will entertain a motion to accept this warrant, or is it mostly a discussion item? So, so, um, so yeah, like, so yeah, like, it's. Uh, so yeah, like it's really a discussion item until the um, until the board makes its recommendations. And we'll be doing that next week. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just have a question. Mr. Mullen, you mentioned the nineteenth for the spin farm. Yes. Seven p.m. is con farm that night, and when I talked to uh, Mr. Uh, Roach. Yes. Yes, so he um, he he reached out to me this morning with a uh, with a pretty significant conflict. So even though I'm mean, to be honest with you, we haven't had time to check the availability of here as of yet. Um, so that presumably means uh, that the yes. Yeah, so so that would um, so pending the availability of prime time, um, presumably that meeting will be at prime time. So, but again, we're trying to, oh, uh, you know, oh, uh, yeah, deal with all the logistics as, uh, like, on an evolving basis. So, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Goulart. Thank you. Uh, proposed Board of Selectmen meeting schedule for July 22 to December uh, 2022. Um, Mr. Karen, have you had the opportunity to review the schedule of meetings and important dates? Yes, I have. Mr. Pacheco, have, have you? Yes, I have. Do either of you have any conflicts with those dates that you know of at this time? No. Uh, then with that being said, I will entertain a motion uh, to accept the meeting dates as proposed from July 13th, 2022 to December 28th, 2022. I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the proposed Board of Selectmen's meeting schedule of July 2022 to December 22 with the possibility of amending or changing those based, based on future conflicts that we may have. Mr. Karen, do I have a second? Yeah. Motion made and second. Yeah. All those in favor? Ken Pacheco was an aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Next on the agenda is scheduled appointments. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. And recognition. Um, first individual is someone that I am certain. So uh, should we wait for Mr. Pies to I come? I believe he's he was trying to be here for around seven o'clock. Oh, okay. I would, I would okay, suggest that you. we uh, hold off on that. Uh, could I ask that we have a motion to <coughs> table this until Mr. Pius is present? I'll make that motion. Mr. Karen? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Ken Pacheco. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Is Mr. Haig here? Sir, he's on his way. I call him. Okay. I will entertain a motion to table this item. Well, so later. move. Oh, Mr. Hague is just walking in. I withdraw my motion. Perfect. Your timing was perfect, <laughs> Mr. Hague. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good evening.
Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we have the annual Memorial Day uh, activity for May 28th, I believe. Monday, May Monday, May 30th. May 30th. Our and ceremony will be uh, here. To your presentation this evening and also okay. Memorial Day activities. Thank so uh, what the plan is to assemble here at the uh, pavilion and go up to the Veterans Park and have a speaking program, a wreath uh, dedication, raising the flag. Um, program is still in the works as far as uh, speakers and um, any input that you would like to uh, give us. So that's our initial flyer. Thank you. Uh, we have traditionally had presentations from Mr. Menges, Mrs. Goulart, and Colonel Perry. And All three have been confirmed to participate on that day. Excellent. Plus a few other things as we can have different expanded a little bit, so. And if you could review the time and locations for the different segments of the presentation, I appreciate it. It would be assembly 10 o'clock here at the uh, pavilion and we'll proceed with our flags and whoever's here, <coughs> join us at the Veterans Park. We'll have a, uh, we'll be raising the flag because at that point it'll be at half staff and we'll be putting it up for the day, for the rest of the day. And uh, wreath ceremony and the speaking program. We're hoping to have uh, taps if we get that done. And, similar to what you've done in the past. Will the Boy Scouts in town be attending? I don't have any connection or anything with the Boy Scouts at this particular point. I have reached out to uh, Pastor Jack and his youth group um, that showed some interest in participating in veterans activities. So I've got a call into him, I'm waiting back. Maybe some of the younger folk in town will show up because Memorial Day is about not only remembering, it's about teaching other generations to remember so we can continue. I, I'm confident that Mr. Pacheco and I can help you in reaching out to the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts. Okay, in this if town. you can do that, they, they would be welcome. You said and, we, uh, so I just, you yes. pointed at me, but I just want to make sure it's yeah, good. Yeah, it is, yes. I know, you volunteered. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> One of the leaders of the Boy Scouts, who's done an incredible job with the garden next door, yeah. is also uh, on a subcommittee with Agricultural Committee, correct? Yes. Yeah, if you could fill that piece in, it would be great because we do need uh, somewhat of a color guide to assemble, and I believe they could, you, you know, could participate it, yeah. with the flags. Um, color guides are hard to come by these days with budget constraints in different departments, so. That'd be great if they volunteer. I'll reach I'll out to her. And I'll reach out to Jen Tuchkowski. Yeah, if you could, you know, send me an email. Jenna Barr, right? <coughs> Excuse me? Jenna Barr, we're talking about Jenna Barr. Montero? Yeah, Jenna Montero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and send me an email so I can list them properly on our uh, program that we'll have. And I'll it, let you know. My any results. other suggestions are welcome, and yeah. I know it's customary after we, when we come back and retire to the pavilion is coffee and donuts, I think. Excellent. That seems to be what I've seen in the it's, past. It's been done in the past. Yeah. There's one other thing that might happen. There's a uh, program called 351 from the governor's office, mm -hmm. which gives us an ambassador from one of the local schools, and they carry the proclamation from the governor, and they come to the ceremony, and I guess they read the proclamation. If it arrives here prior to the day, I believe someone from the select board enters that into the record. I, re I remember you doing uh, Veterans Day. Yes, uh, would we'll be the chairman. We have a you know we have a new chairman now, so right. I, I would ask that the chairman, if if we do get that proclamation, that uh, you have an opportunity to yeah. read that and let the public. Uh, yeah. So if it shows up here, and then I would uh, will let uh, would ask you to speak at that program. Thank you. And represent the uh, town. And uh, of course, all the other selectmen are invited. And yes. 
I notice you all usually participate, so that's good. Yeah. I'm planning on it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. And I'll let you know what the uh, story is. <coughs> Uh, next item on the agenda, Mr. Pacheco, announcements? Yes, the uh, announcements. List of vacancies uh, for boards, committees, and commissions. Cable television committee needs one person. Cemetery commission needs one person. Commission on disability needs three people. Community preservation committee needs one. Uh, conservation commission needs one. Finance committee needs two. Is that? Do they need two? Uh, Do you think um, Yeah, I thought they filled all the positions. How many, I believe how many do they have? I, I don't know. I don't know how many they have. Yeah, I don't want to guess. So we can. So we'll, check we'll on put that. that out there. Fincom needs two. Land use committee needs one. Open space committee needs three. Planning board uh, needs one. Civil Con conservation committee needs one. Superintendent of pest control. I didn't realize we had a superintendent of pest control. <laughs> and uh, TIF review board uh, needs one. The Dighton Lions Club food bank. Just so everybody realized, I'm a member of the Dighton Lions Club, so I hope you understand there's no conflict here. Food bank distribution will be held next at, at 8 a.m. on Saturday, May 21st, 2022. Contrary to what the sign says in Burnett Town Hall, that says May 14th, it's May 21st, uh, at the lower level of 979 Somerset Avenue. The rabies vaccination day, Saturday, May 21st, 2022, from 3 to 4 p.m. at the Dighton Animal Shelter, 821 Tremont Street, $20 cash only per immunization. For more information, call the Dighton Board of Health, 774-872-0943. Bulky items, curbside pickup is scheduled for Monday, 6-6-22 through, Fri Monday, 6 6 through Friday, 6 10 22. Tags may be purchased at the Board of Health Office, 1111 Somerset Avenue. Contact the Board of Health to order your tags at 774-872-0943. They are located in the basement of this building here. A separate tag is required for each item to be disposed of. Bulky item schedule is the same schedule as trash pickup, trash pickup, and items must be out no later than 7 o'clock. And those items, just so the public knows, uh, for air conditioner is uh, $15, barbecue grill is 10, box springs is 15, computer monitor is 10, computer tower is 10, desk slash table is 10, dishwasher is 15, dryer is 15, DVD player is 10. File, ca file cabinet is 10, lap laptop is 10, love seat is 10, mattress is 15, microwave is 10, recliner is 10, refrigerate, refrigerator is 15, the doors must be removed on the refrigerator, sectional couch is 20, sofa couch is 15, stove is 10, television is 20, tire is $5, tire truck for a truck is $10, tire for a tractor is $15, washer is $15, water heater is $15, and VCR is uh, $10. So just so you need to get those tags before the day that you want these items to be picked up, or days before when they close, then I open on Fridays, but make sure you have your tags on your uh, items. I did have in the past, I did have put a TV out with a tag and somebody tried to steal the tag. They didn't steal the TV, but they tried to steal the tag. <laughs> they weren't successful because it sticks so well to the TV, but that happened. And I think that's it for announcements. Mr. Pacheco, thank you very much. Quite a bit. Uh, town administrator's report. Uh, 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 yes, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to give an up. I just wanted to give an update along. Um, I want to give an update along with the building commissioner about uh, uh, the town hall walkway. Uh, like over over the last four to five weeks or so, based uh, ba uh, based on a hundred fifty thousand dollar mass office on disability grant uh, 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 that the town had received. Uh, like at um, at the end of the last, at the end of the last year, uh, like uh, like we were able, uh, we were uh, we were able as a town, uh, we were able as a town to replace the long, uh, the uh, 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 the long time inaccessible ramp uh, that uh, was in front of town hall. Uh, uh, um, um, and in prep, um, and in prepping to do that, what we envisioned uh, was uh, was a path. Uh, was a pathway similar, um, 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 uh, similar to the pathway at Old Town Hall on a cushion, uh, that we want, uh, 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 that is also accessible, uh, that is also accessible that we wanted to use as an example. Uh, 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 after everything happened and the construction was performed, 
oh, you know, oh, you know, like I think all, oh, you know, like, oh, like I think all, I think all of us in town became aware. Uh, oh, 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 the need to have railings there. Uh, 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 so. Uh, so over the last few weeks, so over the last week especially, we begun, uh, we begun a process to plan and look into that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I can if I can, oh yeah, and if I can have Jim update where we are on that. Oh, 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 what we envision as a plan going forward. Uh, like we, ah, uh, we just wanted to share that with the public. Thank you. Sure. Uh, James Aguiar, Building Commissioner. Hello, Dayton. Hello, everyone. So yes, I again concur with uh, Administrator Mullen. The intent was to create a walkway that did not require rails pursuant to uh, state and federal regulations. We succeeded at that. However, the townspeople have spoken. Uh, they would like rails on the walkway. So we intend to move forward with uh, designing rails. Uh, we actually have funding available for the engineering for the uh, railing system. And then uh, I'd like to bring that rail system before the selectmen uh, for discussion. And then uh, we would subsequently uh, put it out to bid. Obviously, we're gonna need to find funding for the rails themselves. And uh, that would have to be uh, at probably a future town meeting. I don't think we have enough money in any of our budget lines to fund the rail system. <coughs> but uh, we can discuss that when the time comes. So to everyone at home who's voiced their uh, concern, we are listening. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did uh, engage the engineering firm. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately for him, he's uh, away on vacation. So as soon as he returns, he's going to get with Administrator Mullen and I, and we'll start the process on designing the rails. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Pacheco? So uh, my understanding is because it's a walkway and not a ramp, the railing doesn't have to be as expensive if it was a ramp. There's certain turns and everything else you have to have for uh, a ramp or for a railing. For a walkway, it's a little different, so I don't think the expense is going to be as bad as it would have been if we kept the ramp or we placed the ramp with another ramp. So uh, I appreciate the design that we have there and okay. understand Thank people's you. concerns. Thank you. Mr. Karen. Yeah. Yes, just to clarify, Jim, uh, we have funding for the engineering, which is not the railway itself. That is correct. We have funding for the engineering to design the railing system that would give us documents that we could then go out to bid with. Okay. We so would just need to, you. yep, then we would subsequently have to find a funding source for the actual construction and installation. I would like to add that this process of the walkway mm -hmm. is one that first was developed with a budget mostly through grants, am I correct? Yes, sir, you are. And as a result, Mr. Aguiar, Mr. Gales, and the people who were involved in mm -hmm. planning and carrying out the construction of this stayed within their budget, and they should be commended. Since it was completed, we have heard from many residents many elderly residents who have voiced concerns that they feel there is a need. And we're going to respond to those needs. And the voters in the town, it is your town, it is your money, it'll be your railway. Um, and as a result, we will fulfill the wishes of, of the voters. Very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, all, all business, uh, budget review. Mr. Mullen, the Assessor's Department. Yes, um, I'm just gonna pull up and share the budget. Um, uh, we just have a, uh, we just have a, we just have a few housekeeping matters um, as we work forward in the budget process. Um, and I was hoping we'd be able to take care of this evening. Um, and, um, and as I mentioned, we're gonna, uh, next when uh, um, next Wednesday we're gonna come uh, we're gonna come back to a lot of uh, we're gonna come back to a lot of other budget <coughs> items, but um, as we go, it's just helpful to um, um, address issues um, as um, as they arise. Uh, but as um, last week, 
um, as we discussed with FinClump in, in the assessor's budget. Um, sorry. In the, in the uh, um, line item 5302, uh, there is uh, the need uh, to increase um, in 5302 the funding uh, for the interim valuation uh, like, uh, like up to a total of $8,000. Uh, like and currently what the board um, has approved um, um, based on earlier recommendations is $4,000. Um, uh, like, um, and we discussed that with the FinCom last week. Uh, um, 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 and if the board would entertain increasing um, that, uh, uh, that to 4,000 to 8,000, uh, that, uh, that would be the question, the assessor's budget at this point. Uh, there was a question also, uh, like in, um, in the same, um, at the same FinCon meeting, uh, whether the total, uh, the total $8,000 in, the total $8,000 in funding in line item 5303, uh, 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 would be needed. Uh, like, uh, like, and uh, like, and based on the updates in the law and the statute, um, uh, uh, um, in the lawsuit that was actually discussed um, at, uh, at, at the FinCon meeting, the, t uh, the entire $8,000 is needed in that line. So, um, so the, recommend the recommendation before you tonight is, um, oh, is, uh, is to increase uh, to increase in line item 5302 to 4,000 to 8,000. Thank you, and I, I also understand that the FinCom is- Is receptive. Uh, is receptive. Yes. They haven't officially voted on it. Now, my understanding is that the valuation uh, costs $8,000, but is it- The interim valuation, yes. But is, isn't it, spread over two fiscal years. One. I, I thought that when we- It's spread over two calendar years. Two calendar years. Yes. But it does not go into two fiscal years. No. Okay. Thank you. And yeah, this was discussed uh, last night last at, night, at yes. the FinCon meeting. They were hoping that to be able to just do 4,000 this year, 4,000 next year. Correct. They weren't able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so now they're seeking, uh, the assessor's office is seeking the $8,000 for come, appear to be receptive to it, and, mm -hmm. and so am I, quite frankly. Okay. No, I just wanted to clarify it. I mean, there were many people that weren't at the FinCon yeah. meeting, nope, and they will sense. see this, and it'd be nice to, to explain. Mrs. Gould, <coughs> yes. everyone to understand <clears throat> we had gotten an $8,000 transfer from the reserve account to take care of the Correct. the uh, interim and when we were looking at that my question to the town accountant was we're going to spend 4,000 mm -hmm. in one calendar year but we really need the rest of it for the next six months and what we found out was because it wasn't a budget item to begin with, and it's not a special article, you can't carry forward the other 4,000 from a transfer. So that's why the 4,000 that was budgeted, we thought we would have the four left over from the transfer. But that 4,000 will close out to free cash. So that'll take care of that. And as Mr. Mullen was talking about the next line, um, in addition to the information I gave you about Verizon, we had the complete list come through. So uh, National Grid, um, Spectra, which is Algonquin gas transmission, um, the, uh, what was Columbia Gas, that's now Eversource for the local gas pipelines in the street. Um, New England Power, which I believe is the high tension lines that go through town. National Grid, who is the, uh, private supplier of electricity. Uh, that's just part of the list of uh, utilities. We've got cable towers. Uh, there's another Verizon in there. 
and uh, we've got to appraise all of them this particular year. That's what that second line for 8,000 is, okay? No, thank you. All right. I, I wanted to, to bring this up for clarification because I think there's confusion with many people, the difference between calendar year and fiscal year. Yes. And I hope by having this discussion, there'll be some clarity because it'll be important when people go to vote at the, at the town meeting. Um, at this time, I will entertain a motion to amend um, the request or approval <coughs> recommendation, Board of Selectmen recommendation to include $8,000 in account number 5302. The interim evaluation. I'll make a motion uh, that the Board of Selectmen recommend that an account number 5302 in the Board of Assessors uh, budget okay. interim valuation be increased from $4,000 to $8,000 as a result of the explanation that we got last night and tonight. Mr. Cameron, do I have a second? Well, I missed that explanation last night, and I apologize for that, but uh, I, I will second this. So, uh, so I'm trying to remember the explanation last. So, so no, we discussed this at the um, at the FinCon meeting on Thursday. I'm on, th I'm on Thursday, Selectman like Karen, uh, where we would uh, where we would need the uh, full eight thousand to do the interim valuation because um, the uh, the eight thousand uh, dollars that was transferred from the reserve fund uh, like wouldn't I I wouldn't be able to be spent uh, be uh, beyond June 30th of uh, which is the end of this fiscal year. Uh, so that so yeah so that leaves oh uh, that leaves a balance of that leaves a balance of four thousand dollars which we need to fund the work uh, like for um uh, like uh, uh, for FY23 uh, which is split over two calendar years. Oh, four thousand and four thousand. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I. Uh, is that all the current money? Just as one line then for the budget. Well, yes, yes, but we're going to need to make two motions. Uh, the first is yeah. to amend it, and then the second will be the numbers are going to change mm -hmm. for the total approval. So, I, I've I've okay. separated them as two separate motions. Motion. Uh, Okay. To amend the Board of Assessors budget, uh, line item 5302 uh, to $8,000. Um, do I, uh, Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Now, based on the increase of $4,000, Mr. Mullen, the new number for account number 141 will be? Uh, I just want to. Um, yeah, yeah two hundred nineteen thousand two hundred ninety-five dollars and sixty cents. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Before you do that, um, can I just ask you why so much money is in overtime? When I mean, why did we jump up, jump up another thousand dollars this year when we barely spent what we had last year or this coming fiscal uh, two thousand twenty-two? Uh, Mr. Karen, I'll, I'll ask. Mrs. Goulart to respond to that. Uh, sure. Mr. Mullen, could you read that whole line? Because I can't see it from here. Yeah, I'll zoom in as well. I'm sorry. It's overtime and something else. Uh, overtime, additional hours. Additional hours. Additional hours. Uh, included in that is anticipated work that Carol Borgard will do to train Mrs. Uh, uh, Schechter on forms that come in during the year that are like one-time forms because Mrs. Beauregard is the person who's experienced to do this. So she'll be training periodically uh, Mrs. Schechter on how to handle these papers and get them filed properly. Whether or not the whole thousand is gonna be needed, I really don't know. If it's not spent, it'll be closing out to free cash. I hate getting it back to free cash because that means we have to tax the people now uh, just to have it come back as free cash. Um, when you say the whole thousand, you're talking about overtime? 
There could be overtime for employees. Mrs. Beauregard would not get overtime pay. Right. That's what I'm asking about, $2,000 for overtime employees when they did increase their $1,000 over last year, and they haven't even spent close to the $1,000 that they had budgeted this year. Okay, but that, that's why I asked Mr. <clears throat> Mullen to read the line. It's not only overtime, yeah. it's also training. There's no way to anticipate whether or not there's a need for overtime for the two employees that are uh, in the collective bar covered by the collective bargaining agreement. Uh, in the case of the training, uh, Mrs. Beauregard will only be coming in to do training as is needed by uh, Mrs. Schechter. At this point in time, we know that there are certain forms that come through sporadically during the year that only at this point in time, only Mrs. Beauregard has been trained to do them simply because she was here for so long. Um, I don't know what else may come down the pike from uh, DOR. Uh, I have, have, although I've been on the uh, Board of Assessors for over a year, uh, all of that work is done internally, and when Mrs. Beauregard was here, she just handled it. So uh, my counterpart, uh, when Mrs. Beauregard was an elected member, neither one of us uh, got involved with actually the day-to-day -day operation of the office and filling out reports and forms for DOR. So, Mr. Chairman, for clarification, we're not voting uh, tonight at as a recommendation for this budget, correct? We're just voting to change the bottom line figure. And then once we hear from FinCom, we'll make our recommendation as to whether or not we're supporting uh, the, the budget for uh, the assessor's office. Is that correct? It does, I mean, that, so, so that could be one way of proceeding. The, uh, 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 the selectmen uh, um, at, a, uh, like at a prior meeting made a recommendation uh, uh, to fund uh, to fund the assessor's budget, uh, like at uh, like at all, um, at two hundred fifteen thousand dollars, and what uh, like and what we were proposing tonight was uh, to increase that recommendation by an additional four. Um, but I mean, uh, uh, but understanding the question that's out there, uh, you know, I mean, oh, uh, you know, like it wouldn't be, oh, uh, you know, like it, oh, uh, uh, wouldn't be unthought of to wait, um, oh, uh, yeah. I uh, like uh, looking to have a more full conversation with the FinCom about this either. So that the public knows, the Board of Selectmen goes through all the budgets, they meet with the yes. department heads, they make a recommendation. Yes. Then goes to FinCom, they make a recommendation. We participate in those meetings. Mm -hmm. We've had four or five meetings with FinCom. We're going to have one again next week. And then it comes back to us and we make our final yes. uh, recommendation yes. based on the conversation that we have with FinCom. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little uh, reluctant at this time anyway. Uh, to uh, make that recommendation that we uh, support this budget. The public should know that this budget is, with the four, uh, th additional $4,000, is $10,000 less than what it was, if I'm correct, the last year's budget. It's a reduction of $10,000, so it's not like we're spending extra money, mm -hmm. uh, but I do wanna hear from uh, FinCon okay. as to what the rec recommendation is. Well, Mr. Chairman, um, in getting ready for the FinCon meeting last night, uh, I had worked with Mrs. Uh, Schechter and I emailed everything to uh, Mr. Roach and uh, asked him, do you want me there at the meeting? He said, no, I think I've got enough info. He said, we will support the, adding the 4,000 uh, back to the line, knowing that the 4,000 that we can't spend will close out to free cash. He also said, however, you understand, this is not the final budget for the Board of Assessors, that when we get down to um, finalizing budgets, uh, there may be cuts in your budget, and I said, yeah, I know how it works. You've got to go into town meeting with a balanced budget. So the only thing that, that uh, was my understanding, and I think is what uh, Mr. Bowen was saying, that it was only the $4,000 we were discussing, and FinCom uh, added it in, but our budget is not finalized, and they'll do that at the next meeting, and there could be cuts in it. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cameron. Yes. Are you recommending an amendment to this budget? Am I what? I'm sorry, I missed that. Are you recommending an amendment to a line item in this budget? Yes, I would like to see the overtime go from 2000 to 1000 
before we accept or ask for a motion on this request, I would like to continue a discussion on it. Okay. Mr. Pacheco, do you have anything? I just, I want to wait for, to see what FinCom says about the budget before I make a recommendation that we reduce the uh, overtime uh, budget. Thank you. So I'm not prepared uh, to vote tonight. I would like to comment before I do ask for a motion. Over a year ago, we paid, or well, we hired a principal assessor at $81,000 a year. That negotiated fee was based on the fact that we were told that the candidate had a vast amount of experience. Would we be? We had we, we, spent, excuse me. I'm just asking that we be we careful as to what we said. We spent a whole year training. Um, we're asking for $2,000 to continue that training. Um, I have some concerns about that. At this point in time, Mr. Karen, do you have a motion to present before the board? Mr. Karen? I think we should table this. I think we should table this. I will, are you making that in the form of a motion? Yes, I am. Motion to table. I'll second that motion. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Aye. Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. I believe what got tabled was the discussion in regards to the overtime and additional hours. Okay, so that's 5303? Uh, 5131. That is 5131. Excuse me? 5131. 5131. So, okay, so the one before that, the 4,000, I'm confused with what just no. happened. Did you vote to approve the yes. 4,000? So that line is eight, and it's yes. only the, that line that's up in question. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Actually, I think the whole budget's up to, to question. We're going to see what the FinCom says. Right. And what the whole budget's okay, up to question. Which, which I understand, right. because they, make, they, they may, may make changes even more cuts. that we may agree with. So. But as the Board of Selectmen, right now, you're not going to act on that uh, 53, excuse me. 5131. 5131. Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Um, um, so, so, um, so then, so, so then, if I could, Mr. Chairman, on the fire, on the fire, highway, and sewer department, I would recommend tabling to next week. Um, um, we were anticipating having different types of information ready. Uh, like uh, for those three budgets, but uh, uh, um, at this point we need another week to finalize those recommend those updated recommendations. Do I have a motion to accept? make a motion that we uh, table the budget review for the fire, highway, and sewer department? Motion, uh, Mr. Karen. Do I have a second? Second. Motion second. made and seconded. Aye. Mr. Karen. Aye. Jim and Hull is an aye. I will at this time ask for a motion to suspend the order um, of the agenda to make a presentation to longtime 
member of the Board of Health and someone who's been a, a pillar of this community for a long, long time, uh, Mr. Thomas Pius. I so move. Yes. So you, your table, you delayed action, you skipped over it until he arrived. So now you've got to bring it up. Well, that's what we, we, Mr. Pacheco just made a motion. I'll make a motion that, I'll make a motion that the scheduled appointment, agenda item number eight, regarding Tom Pye's retired Board of Health Chairman, uh, certificate of recognition, uh, be heard now. I'll discuss Mr. now. Mr. Karen, do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. We should have Mr. Pius come to the come microphone. Up, please. Put the cell phone away, Mr. Pius. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Catavio, would you like to also join him as the. Yes, I'll let him speak and then I'll, if you don't mind. Okay, thank you. Mr. Pius. Like yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, it is an honor to present this proclamation and certificate of recognition for all of your years of service. Um, whereas Thomas Pius roots in the town of Dighton go back many gen generations. He graduated from Dighton Rehoboth, Re Rehoboth High School and after serving his country in the military, he came back to Dighton, where together with his wife, De Deborah, raised their two daughters, Bethany and Kristen. And whereas Mr. Thomas Pius has dedicated over 44 years of public service to the town while working full-time for the United States Postal Service and as a part-time real estate appraiser. And whereas Mr. Thomas Pius volunteered countless hours to assist various boards and committees that include the Planning Board, Board of Selectmen, Board of Health, 40B Committee, Community Preservation Committee, Stormwater Committee, and the Greater Attleboro Taunton Home Consortium. And whereas Mr. Thomas Pius led efforts together <coughs> with fellow committee members to write the Town of Dighton's first housing production plan. And whereas Thomas Pius helped to establish the Board of Health as a standalone department after separation for the Board of Selectmen in 2017. And whereas Mr. Thomas Pius, in his long standing role of Chairman of Board of Health, started many programs for the town to include the textile recycling, pink bag program, household hazardous waste days, and implementation of the Code Red Emergency Notification System. And whereas Mr. Thomas Pius created regulations for marijuana, body art, outside wood burning boilers, bed and breakfast, lease laws, residential kitchens and stumps. And whereas during his tenure as chairman of the Board of Health, Mr. Thomas led efforts to manage Dighton's response to global solid waste disposal challenges while at the same time maintaining continued disposal services for town residents. And whereas Mr. Thomas Pye's leadership has been instrumental in helping to guide the town of Dighton through the COVID-19 pandemic, as he and team prioritized the public health and safety of town residents and employees. Now we, the Board of Selectmen of the town of Dighton, do hereby recognize Mr. Pye's for his hard work and dedication to our community and residents. On behalf of our grateful community, we extend our sincere gratitude to Mr. Pius for his tireless efforts to move Dighton forward. It witness whereof we have hereunto set our hands and caused the great seal of the town of Dighton to be affixed on this 11th day of May, 2022. The Board of Selectmen of the Town of Dighton. 
let graciously present this honor. Thank you. To Thank you. Personally, I want to thank you for your mentorship, for your assistance in my short tenure on the Board of Selectmen. Um, you're a wealth of knowledge. You have a great understanding and deep concern and care for the people of Dyke, and you exhibited it through over the 20 years that you served this town. Thank you. No, thanks. I was going to say, uh, too, if... Um you had told me, someone had told me back in 2006, I'd be standing here after all these years getting a certificate of recognition. Recognition, I say, you're crazy. I'm gonna do my three years on the Board of Selectmen and get out, but I ended up doing nine uh, consecutive years and uh, you know, it was one of the most rewarding experiences I think that you know, I could have had um, you know, I've always been about helping people or trying to support people. Uh, so it was a, I'll have to say to people out there is, um, the town has a lot of talent, uh, and you can see that in the people, the residents, uh, so I, I would encourage everyone to try to step up to the plate when they can and get involved in town matters and you'll see how rewarding it can be and uh, i'm very glad to have done it and uh, the fact that i was born here i guess had something to do with that i don't know you know not too many people here can say they were born <coughs> born in town i don't think anybody here is old enough maybe barbara but uh or nancy <laughs> okay so um you know, and, and I always felt that I owed the town of Dighton something, so that's what I did. I became involved, and one thing led to another, and uh, but finally, time comes when you know it's time to go. So, you know, just but thank you very much. Thank wanna, everybody who supported me over the years. I just want to add that I've supported uh, Tom uh, over the years. <coughs> Our daughters have been best buddies since they were in uh, seventh grade, I believe, and, and they're still best yeah. buddies. Uh, we've uh, had a Super Bowl game when the Patriots beat the Atlanta Falcons uh, to the dismay of your son-in-law, oh, yeah. uh, yeah. who is, comes from Atlanta. Uh, I went to your uh, granddaughter's first birthday party when she called me grandpa all night and sat yeah, in my yeah. lap because they, they found some resemblance, I guess. Uh, but we've been friends for a long time. I've always supported you. Uh, I've liked your positions that you've done. The senior abatement that we have is a as a result of uh, uh, Tom Pius and his support for that. Uh, he's done a lot of work for the town. Uh, we're gonna miss him. I think we're gonna see him somewhat in the future again, but he definitely needs uh, a break. Uh, but he, you've been on so many different committees. We've shared some of those committees, uh, but you've been so active in town. I think the town is gonna miss you, your experience, your knowledge. Uh, I'm just waiting for the Solid Waste Committee. Yeah. That's yeah. all. <laughs> that's, that's your latest <laughs> agenda item. There is definitely a need. Yes. Uh, yeah. But you've been a, a great asset to the, uh, the say no, no matter where I'm at, I'll always be available to anybody, um, you know, that may need help in any position in the town if I can help. So um, that's where I'm at, and uh, I'll always be here if somebody needs help with anything. So. And over the years in the Board of Selectmen, I'm, sure, I'm sure you've given many of these uh, recognition proclamations out, but for you to receive it, it should really be an honor because it doesn't happen uh, to every anybody or everybody. Uh, so uh, I appreciate the work you've yeah, done for this great. town. No, thank you. Thank you, Selectman Hall. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks, Mr. Pius. We'll, we'll get the final signature and okay. Mr. Mullen will present this. You're going to frame that, right? <laughs> yes. If it's in the budget. So just put that in. I'm going to stick a hundred underneath there. <laughs> so just one other thing. We did, um, actually, 
Uh, we did actually have a comment in the Facebook, oh my god, not the Facebook chat, I'm sorry, the Zoom chat, uh, that I actually think, um, um, and I think uh, the person who, uh, like, uh, who wrote the comment is now logging back on, um, uh, but there is an iPhone user, um, and, I, and I just want to give that person uh, the ability to say what she said in the chat. Good evening. You just have to unmute yourself, Kristen. Kristen? Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Yes. All right. I wanted to be there, but couldn't. I don't, did you read the chat? I got disconnected. No, no, I haven't read the chat. I haven't read it. I, like, I actually felt it would be better coming from you directly, Kristen. Okay, perfect. All right. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. How are you? <laughs> wanted to say congratulations. We're all very proud of you. I don't know how, listening to him list all those things off, I can't even say I knew all you did. So, you know. Well, he missed a couple, you. but I didn't want to tell him. <laughs> He's fact checking. Oh, my phone is acting up. And we love you very much. And, yeah. you know, I kind of follow in your footsteps a little bit, but I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But anyways, I just wanted to say we love you and we're very proud of you. Congratulations. Thanks. I, I forgot to mention, if it wasn't for family, that I wouldn't have done what I was able to do, family support. And especially your mother and you guys, uh, you've always supported me no matter what I did. So, you know, uh, it was helpful. So, all right, you know. Well deserved. Yeah. Okay, Kristen. thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Bye-bye. Thank you. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Karen, do you have any, do you have anything you wish to add in we'll recognition of Mr. Pius? Uh, uh, no, I, I think it's a, it's a fabulous gentleman, and uh, I've known him nothing about him but to be a gentleman, and I, I, I couldn't ask for uh, a better person to be to so dishonored to. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Ms. Katavia, as yes. chairman of the Board of Health. Yes. I, um, I'm the newbie, but I am the chairman. Um, my name is Barbara Katabia. I've been a resident of Dighton for over 50 years, and I met Tommy Pyers about 50 years ago <laughs> because he was a childhood friend of my husband and neighbor, and I can only, and I can only imagine what those two got into. But uh, so when Tom asked if I would be interested in applying for Board of Health, I was really surprised. But he said, with my construction septic and stalls experience and having a food trailer, he thought I'd be a good fit. He also told me it'd be just about three hours a month at the meeting. Oh, I'm glad you guys are laughing. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my first meeting, I went, and I said, well, which seat should I sit in? And I said, well, I guess I'll take that one over there. And someone said, oh, no, you may as well go in the front here, in the center, because Tommy's retiring. And I said, what? <laughs> they said, yeah. And I said, boy, you guys, you gave me a life jacket, and now you're throwing me off the boat. <laughs> and that's basically what happened. But Tommy was always there to help me and uh, gave me pointers. And um, I learned that the Board of Health is so much more than just health. It takes care of the transfer station. Um, during COVID, our health inspector, Todd Pilling, and our office administrator, Roslyn Grassi, worked for weeks on end, no days off. They were downstairs working, putting the work in, taking care of Dighton. And Tommy was, wasn't here all the time, but 24-7, he was available. And I mean 24-7, there were long nights and long days. And I, I couldn't believe it, I didn't know about that. I thought everybody in the town went home and did their work from home, but not the Board of Health. They were required. And it was their job, their commitment, and they filled it amazingly. They also do housing problems, which concerns health problems, animal control, and of course now we have the stormwater, 
which is amazing in itself, but it, it's, it's a big job. It's a great job. And Tommy was right there. And so were our inspector and our, what, our administrator. They work crazy hours. It's amazing. I've learned that because um, last week I put in over 20 hours. Just sitting there doing work. And it wasn't, we weren't chatting on the phone. We were doing solid, solid work that has to be done. Tommy, I can't imagine how you did it for so many years. I I'm not worn out yet, but I'm getting there. <laughs> and um, the Board of Health in this town, you're just indispensable. And we will be bugging you. No, but we will be bugging you, sweetheart. We will. Fantastic and girl. That's going to be a tremendous help, I think, to the board. So, um, could you please come up here? Fine. Come here. Come here. <laughs> My turn. I'm throwing you off the boat. What are you doing? Oh, From the board you. of health and the townspeople. Oh, you guys we already you. gave me something. Love you. <laughs> no, we can never give you enough, and the town should be forever grateful to you. And I'm not. I'm not even kidding about that. He's an amazing no. guy. Thank you. And you're always well, welcome. You. you know that. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Pilling, do you care to speak? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> health agent Todd Pilling. Yes, um, Tom has um, been invaluable to the Board of Health for the four and a half years since we've been in existence. And yes, I've given him a fair amount of stress through that four and a half years as we've dealt with growing pains and changes in course and all the new programs and everything. And yes, he's been there right beside us, pushing for us, mm -hmm. arguing for us, and just helping us get through it all because a lot of the waters we couldn't navigate without him. And um, I don't know where the Board of Health would be right now without him. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing where we go, but I know at any time we can ever call him and, and get his help as we go forward. And uh, I'm going to miss him. And um, Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Mr. Pilly. Uh, Ms. Mello, as the health agent, I'm uh, sorry, the uh, town nurse, do you have anything that you would like to add? She's also a Board of Health member. And now Board of Health Commissioner, yes, thank you. I'm sorry I couldn't be there tonight, um, and I actually thought I mess, missed this moment, so somehow I logged in right at the right time. Um, you're definitely going to be missed. Um, I wish that we had more time to work together. Um, I can't even begin to tell you how grateful I am for the opportunity you gave me to be the town nurse. Um, it means more to me than I think you'll ever know. Um, and I know you're not going to go far because you're going to be on the Solid Waste Committee. And that's going to be great. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Goulat, I know you served with Mr. Pius for many years. Oh, now. <laughs> now I'm going to say stuff to embarrass Tom. Um, I was on the finance committee for a number of years. Uh, and in 2006, it was publicly announced that we had federal and state funding to replace the Berkeley Dighton Bridge after over 50 years of saying you got it and somebody pulling the money. Uh, I was on the Finance Committee, as I said. I went to the then Board of Selectmen, uh, Richard Hegeman, Tom Pius, and Frank Costa, and uh, went to a meeting and they asked if I wished to speak and I said, I'm here to ask you to appoint me liaison to the Board of Selectmen for the Berkeley Dighton Bridge Project. And they said, what does that mean? And I said, I want to work for the town to represent you 
to do everything that needs to be done to get that bridge built. I won't spend any money. I won't make any major decisions. I will bring everything to you, but I will make sure all the meetings we need and all the paperwork we need will get done. And that was my first appointment from the Board of Selectmen. And shortly after that, the town was fined by the EPA for not following its notice of intent. In April of 2007, I was elected, so I joined the board. Mr. Uh, Costa did not uh, uh, run, and he supported me. At that point in time, uh, it was Board of Selectmen, Board of Health, and uh, I really got to work with Tom Pius. And it was, I mean, I know a lot about municipal finance. I had no idea about the actual governance of the town relative to selectmen and boards of health. And uh, it was Mr. Pius who would usually call me at any hour of the day or night and tell me we had a call. We had an inspection. There was a problem. Uh, there was, the, remember the bond fire on Main Street when we got there, the, the oh, yeah. fire department responded. It was a smoldery thing um, and it hadn't burst into a flame, but you know, wet hay and all of that. Um, but when we got there, we found uh, situations with uh, calf and some other animals that uh, we had to take action on. Um, but um, whenever Tom called, I knew we had to go. Um, and also, that was the first year that when we organized the board, uh, Mr. Hegman was chairman of the Board of Selectmen and Mr. Pius was chairman of the Board of Health. And I said, okay, I'm clerk of both boards, but let's divvy up the work if Richard does selectmen and Tom does board of health, I will do the backup that goes with them both, but I want to keep the appointment for the bridge, and also I'm going to take on stormwater, because if we don't get this done, we're going to get fined again. And I remember them saying to me, do you know anything about stormwater? And I said, no, but I'm going to learn. The first MS4, he signed as chairman of the board of health, I believe. But that's just one example of all of the things that, that Tom and I have worked on over the years. Um, I have learned so much from Tom. Uh, he's been supportive of things that have come up that the town needed to do. He had the knowledge. He had the experience. Uh, when, we, when I came back and the EPA had added so much more to the stormwater program and we formed the committee, uh, couldn't have had a better person to be on that committee, and I certainly thank the uh, Board of Selectmen for uh, appointing him and all the, um, all the members of that committee. But um, just, just the background and experience he had was, uh, you can't put a dollar value on it. Um, so I just want to publicly say thanks, Tom. It's been a good ride. Uh, <laughs> I guess we were a team. We were together. Um, I'm not going to get emotional, but when he says to you, he'll be around, and if anybody needs him, I'll tell you a story. One day, my husband was out in the back chopping wood, comes in the house all upset. He can't find his ring. And he's, I've looked everywhere, and I can't find my ring. He's, and I said, what were you doing out in the woods? The back of our yard, one part is, is, it's not lawn, it's, it's kind of wild, you know. I said, I know who to call, because Tom has a metal detector. And he came to the house oh, and wow. he found the ring. So, uh, I that. thank you. Uh, John certainly appreciated it. Yeah. And uh, he never lost it again, Tom. <laughs> so, I just, wanna, I just want to say, <laughs> I just want to say thank you publicly. Uh, and, and I agree with everything that's been said here tonight. Thank Thanks, Tom. And I'm not sure everybody knows, but uh, Tom got the most votes as selectman of anybody in town in any election that we've ever had the first time you ran. You look at me like that, but 2006 got the most votes. I told him that's the highest number of votes you'll ever get because it's downhill from there, but uh, <laughs> we got elected two more times. It was the biggest turnout, and uh, it, was, it was, if you remember, it was very cold. It was, did we have the elections maybe in February at that time? You've had it changed. 
you've had a change, but it was very, I mean, it was cold, cold. Uh, but he gets the most votes of any select person. I believe it. He's That's why I said earlier it's important for people to get out and vote. Love yeah. by the town. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, even back then, the total amount, I think, was 1,600. Wow. And uh, as far as I know, it's never been that high since. Wow. But uh, it's so important. Mr. Sippy, Mr. Sipion, you had your hand raised earlier. Was that in regards to um, Mr. Pires, Joe Sipion? Joe Joe's iPhone. iPhone. Joe Joe's iPhone. iPhone. Joe's iPhone. I'm sorry. Nicole Mello. Uh, Mr. No. Karen? Hello? Yes. I was just wondering if you had anything further or we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. No, we can go on to the next item. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I believe I'll need a motion to return to the regular voter business. I'll make a motion that we return to uh, Slecken's reports. Our agenda item number 12. Uh, Mr. Karen, do you have a second? Second. Motion made and second. Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Uh, Mr. Pacheco? Yes, I just want to give a brief report on the Dighton Trails Committee Feasibility Study. Uh, we had a meeting um, a couple of weeks ago with the Horsley Witten Group, uh, who's doing the feasibility study for the trails, uh, the two mile trails from the back of Alice's restaurant to uh, Sandpiper way yes they uh, had a meeting earlier but they failed to invite the parks and recreation as well as the uh, Commission on Disability so they, we had a, a separate meeting with them and uh, Kevin Smith Nicole Mello attended uh, Sue Cody from uh, Parks and Rec and uh, Jonathan uh, Gales and myself we met with uh, Gerald Adler who is the director of trails and, and Greenway for the DCR Department of uh, uh, Recreation and Conserva conservation Department of Conservation and Recreation. Recreation. And we also met with the principal planner, uh, Nate, Nate Kelly, who works for Horsley Witten Group, and Jennifer. <coughs> That's that we discussed with, with them our concerns about the, the trail and how it would impact people with uh, disability. And we had a very healthy uh, conversation. We talked about signage, perhaps some of the signage uh, being in Braille, some of the signage being able to uh, assist people who are autistic so that they can kind of get an idea as to what they're uh, that's going to be in front of them when they go to the, on the trails. We talked about the, uh, the different uh, parking areas and how they're going to be, have to be accessible. We talked about some areas that are uh, historic on the trails um, that we want to make sure that it's accessible, and they seem to be um, willing to include that in their feasibility study for the, uh, for the trails. Uh, we're also going to have, at some point, I ask that we have a, uh, we actually walk the trails so we can identify certain uh, things that we think need to be um, fixed or corrected and be ADA compliant. And they, uh, like I said, they were uh, receptive. So I thought we had a very good meeting. It wasn't that we neglected anybody else, but the stakeholders was the Parks and Recreation. It was the Commission on Disability, and they weren't called to the first meeting. So we were able to have a separate meeting, uh, and we were able to present our concerns. So it was a good meeting, and I'm looking forward to the uh, feasibility study uh, coming out. There were a little ways from uh, completing it, uh, but it's nice to see that the town parks and recreation and commission on disability is going to be representative and have an I input on it so oh, thank, thank you, you and thank you for helping to coordinate that i do have um something but mr karen do you have anything regarding selectman's report no i don't see okay um at the last park and recreation commission meeting kevin smith was appointed chairman susan cody vice chair and recently elected member Rachel Goulart as clerk. The commission also unanimously appointed Kevin Smith to be their representative on the Community Preservation Committee. 
I was advised that this position does not need Board of Selectmen approval since Park and Recreation is an elected board. Thank you. Uh, correspondence uh, to the Dayton Board of Selectmen from Annabella Powell, Executive Director, Dayton Council on Aging. We are pleased to inform you that the Dayton Council on Aging has received a check in the amount of $112 from the Taunton Housing Authority Resident Services Coordinator Grant for the purchase of 28 fitness class passes for Lincoln Village Housing for the Elderly Residents. As usual, all donations are turned over to the town accountant and deposited in the Council on Aging gift account. Should you have any questions or need additional information, please do not hesitate to call. Ms. Powell, congratulations and thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if you have anything you would like to add in regards to this award. No, not today. No. no. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mullen, in regards to this, what is the process to access money from the gift account? I understand Parks and Rec also has a gift account as well. So yes, yeah, so the uh, so uh, so the Council on Aging is a uh, is able to access and expend from the gift account. Uh, like if the gift is accepted. Uh, uh, I'll, uh, uh, the gift of $112 is accepted by the board, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so I would recommend that the board vote to accept the gift uh, from the Taunton Housing Authority Resident Services. So then the Council on Aging would be able to, uh, they would be able to expend um, that amount of, expend that amount of funding from the gift account. Thank you, Ms. Mellon. Yep. I will entertain a motion to Accept the gift from the Taunton Housing Authority for one hundred and twelve dollars. I'll make a motion that we accept the gift of one hundred and twelve dollars from the Taunton Housing Authority Resident Service Coordinator Grant uh, to be deposited in the Council on Aging uh, gift account. Uh, Mr. Karen, do I have a second? <coughs> Mr. Karen, hello. <coughs> motion has been made in second. Mr. Pacheco. Uh, aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Just so the public knows, the, there is a time delay. Although it's 8 o'clock here, it's probably 2 o'clock in the morning over there. So just so people know, appreciate Mr. Karen uh, <coughs> participating. To the Dayton Board of Selectmen, from, Sh from Sheila D. New, Assistant Program Manager, Dayton Council on Aging, Primetime Supportive Day Program. We are pleased to inform you that Primetime has received a donation in the amount of $30. As usual, all donations are turned over to the town accountant and deposited in the Primetime Gift and Donation account. At this time, I will accept a... I'll make a motion that we accept the $30 donation of that was given to prime time that we turn over that money to the town accountant and deposit in the prime time gift and donation account. Do I have a second? Second. Motion has been made and second. Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Thank you. Um, approval of the minute Board of Selectmen regular meeting minutes of April 27, 2000. 22. I'll make a motion that the Board of Selectmen approve the regular meeting minutes of April 27, 2022. Do I have a second? Mr. Karen? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Approval of the warrants. Make a motion that we approve the warrants dated May 4, 2022, 44A-22. $107,427 in 44B22-22, $689, $689,000, $73.44.
Do I have a second on the motion? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. I'll make a motion that we approve the warrants for May 11, 2022. 45A-22, $110,653.60, and 45B-22, $180,960.92. Mr. Karen, do we have a motion? Uh, second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Thank you. Public input? Yes. Last Friday, we were honored to be invited to the ribbon cutting at the Aggie School. And I didn't stay for the tours because I had other plans. And then there was an open house on Saturday. A number of people have told me about a, I'll call it, a village that was designed by the natural resources students. And it had everything you can think of, including uh, a stormwater system, and a drainage system, and somebody said there was a pot that looked like winter with road salt. So I was speaking to the superintendent <clears throat> to find out what they were gonna do with it, and I just want the public to know that is a permanent exhibit, and if people wish to see it, they can call and, and you know, arrange a, a, a visit. But um, I believe that conservation chairman, Bill Frenette's grandson is one of the students in that program who helped create this. So I intend to go see it because I, I, I did miss it, but the feedback was very good, and I just wanted the public to know, if you didn't see it, I understand it's worth seeing, and it will be a permanent exhibit. Thank you. You're welcome. The, I had the wonderful opportunity of attending the tour and the presentation, uh, the award ceremony, uh, ribbon cutting on Friday and visited on Saturday as well. What a gem for the town of Dyke. Academically, that school has received recognition for programs uh, that are nation first class leaders. Um, they have a lab for climbing for students that can be done very safely, one of the best in the nation. They have a robotic dairy barn that is one of the top in the nation. They have an actual museum with live animals that is something people must see. It's just incredible for a high school to have a museum, a museum that I might add that is run by the students that the tours are conducted by the students. They have, and I don't know if many people are aware, they have doggy daycare. They have doggy grooming that is open to the public. We are very fortunate to have a facility that our students can attend that is one of the best in the nation. Um, I might also add a project that was frugally done, very nicely done, and done at a, at a cost that the taxpayers in the town of Dighton can handle. And we all appreciate that. Thank you. Anyone else for public input? No. At this point, I will Entertain a motion to enter an executive session under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A7, to comply with or act under the authority of any general or special law or federal grant and aid requirements. We'll also enter uh, into executive session to approve the Board of Health Executive Session meeting minutes of September 9, 2021. Approval of the Board of Health Executive Session meeting minutes of October 4th, 2021. 
approval of the Board of Selectmen's Executive Session meeting minutes of April 13th, 2022, and approval of the Board of Selectmen's Executive Session meeting minutes of April 27th, 2022. I so move. Mr. Karen, do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. Mr. Pacheco. Aye. Mr. Karen. Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. We will not be returning to regular session. Thank you. Good night. Good night.